Access Sacramento presents Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week, and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda. After 11 weeks of hard play, the high school football season has reached a special stage. It is called the postseason, and Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week has an opening round doozy on hand for you tonight. We're in Elk Grove, where the Monterey Trail Mustangs this evening play host to the invading Pleasant Grove Eagles on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week, this being the CIF Sac Joaquin Section Football Championships. Well, good evening. As you can see, pleasant conditions here in El Grove at Monterey Trail with the Imperator of Analysis, Hall of Famer Jim Domino. I'm Will James. We welcome you aboard, and we think we have something special for you tonight in this opening round. There are two ball clubs, certainly contrasting styles, but two clubs that score big, Coach. They sure do. Contrasting styles is uh, something else. The run, run production of that beer offense of T.J. Ewing at Monterey Trail is phenomenal. They're back, they average 8.9 coming in, and met, most of their backs have double-digit average. Conversely, of course, that passing attack of Pleasant Grove is uh, with Valencia healthy again, their quarterback throwing for over 2,000 yards, so expect an aerial circus out of the Eagles tonight. We'll look a little deeper into those big time, big playmakers, but uh, it's been a couple years since the last time these two teams squared off, given that Monterey Trail switched from the Delta to the Metro League. And in that last meeting, the uh, Mustangs took care of business, Coach, right here on this field. They certainly did two years ago. Matter of fact, September of 17, the Eagles got off to a great start with a 14-0 lead. Then the Mustangs came roaring back to take the lead 21-14. Budget and company then went crazy with their run game for 370 yards. They built up a big lead, 42 to 14, and coasted home to victory. Well, it was 2017 when they last met. Here we are two years later, but it's a different scenario. It is playoff time. Now, the last outings for these two teams, both clubs were hopeful that they were momentum builders, but only one of them claimed that distinction, Coach. Well, Eagles um, got crushed, unfortunately, in the final, and uh, that cost them a, a higher seed in that ball game. They went over to Jesuit, and Jesuit handled them on a Saturday afternoon. Jesuit built up a 35-7 halftime lead. Valencia had 198 yards of passing and two touchdowns, but not enough to take care of Susac and the Marauders, so Jesuit coasted to a very easy victory, 42-21. Well, easier than that coasting job was posted by Monterey Trail. They took on the McClatchy Lions, and it was more of a scrimmage than an actual all-out game. The Mustangs posted their third shutout of the season, blasting C.K. Mack well up into the 50s and tossing a goose egg on defense. Well, so sure the running clock was in place, wasn't it, Will, early in that ball game, uh, I would think. As you said, uh, they ought to come out there. They ought to come out of that uh, very easy victory, well-rested for tonight. 
Well, let's examine the impact players for these two squads. We'll open with the visitors, Matt Costa's ball club coming in here to Monterey Trail. They've got their hands full and will be the Eagles aces that have to lead the way this evening on the road. Well, let's start with Nathan Valencia, one of the top quarterbacks in the area, having accounted for 2,700 plus yards, of which 23 was 2,300 passing, involved in 34 touchdowns. Jacob Cushow, who's done everything from quarterback to halfback to wide receiver, had a terrific year going, 38 receptions, 8 TDs, and not but least Max Lochran Smith having an outstanding year with 34 catches, four touchdowns, and Cushow and Smith got the speed to go to the house. On the defensive side, Matt Nickerson, their team captain, once again leads the team in tackles. He'll be wearing 31 tonight. Logan Elner, outstanding safety, has had a great year with 34 tackles. And then the big guy up front, Jack O'Connor, starting both ways at tackle and uh, with two sacks, having a great year. One of the top linemen in the league, Jack O'Connor. Well, Monterey Trail head coach T.J. Ewing will counter with the major Mustangs, and these have had a highlight reel every week, just about uh, quite an assortment of talented, skilled players. Well, let's start with quarterback Victor Timonen. Now, he's had a great year, nine touchdown passes with no, zero, zero interceptions. Khalib Ransour, outstanding running back, having a phenomenal year, 857, seven TDs. Then blocking up front, leading the way, Lathan Snipes, one of the league's outstanding blockers. On the defensive side, the tackle machine, Marcus Jones, another year approaching 100 tackles, 2.5 sacks, three fumble recoveries, and I'll tell you, he's one of the best linebackers in the city. Antonio Williams, the defensive back, having a phenomenal year with three interceptions. And last but not least, big Mario Keenan, anchoring that line both ways, a great run stopper. We have it set up for you here on Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Opening round action of the CIF Sac Joaquin Section Football Championships. Monterey Trail playing host to Pleasant Grove. Stay with us when we come back. Lauren Goodman will add some finishing touches to this pregame installment. Stay with us. To Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not home. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me.
Welcome to the show this evening. We're in Elk Grove at Monterey Trail High School, and this is playoff time here. Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. Monterey Trail hosting Pleasant Grove. Let's toss our attention down to field level. Lauren Goodman has more for us. Goody? Well, Will, these two teams playing against each other before once league opponents are now coming into a playoff battle in their 12th meeting as these two teams have been battling it out, but it's been dominated by Pleasant Grove. With Joe Catalico as head coach, the Eagles were able to win the first seven games, 06 to 2012. Monterey Trail won the next three out of four, 14 and 17. And Monterey Trail were able to score the highest points in the total of 49. Now, you talked about it a little bit in the pregame, as you and Jim alluded to, when TJ Ewing and the Mustangs were able to come back from a special call in their last meeting. Now, PG was stormed out with a 14-0 lead in the first quarter, but Monterey Trail responded very well in the, with three TDs in the second, and it was all Monterey Trail for the rest of the game. The Vaughn Veer was in its high form, and then these two teams were able to battle it out. Monterey Trail actually finished with 370 yards rushing, and there were big plays tacked in by Zach Larrier with the 62 yard punt. You also had your little budget with a 30 yard run. You had 50 yard run from Sam Williams, 60 yard run from Victor Oliver. And when the smoke ended, Monterey Trail took the victor at 49 21. Now, Matt Costa, on the other hand, has a vaunted memory of this game, and he definitely wants to bring a resurgence to how the Eagles are playing. Now, since he's been at the head coach position, Matt Costa has definitely turned the program around only in his third year. He was once the former head coach at Kennedy for five years, where he brought Kennedy back to the playoff berth in 14 and 15. And then he was also the Mira Loma head coach for three years, where he was able to bring that program back and make it to the playoffs in 2009. Now, we know the leader for the Mustangs are the one and only T.J. Ewing. He is the only head coach in school history in the 15 seasons since T.J. has been here. He's had tremendous seasons, and last year was his year. He had his best regular season with a 10-0 in 2018. He also had his longest winning streak with 12 games in 2018. He has back-to-back -back Metro League championships in 18 and 19, and an SGS D1 Finals appearance in 2018. Got a ball game on our hands, guys. Will. Yes, we do have one on our hands, and as is always the case, Intangibles will play big, and so will the key points of interest. And the Imperator has isolated some keys and matchups for us in tonight's game, featuring two teams that know how to score the football. Well, they certainly do. Let's start with Monterey. Well, T.O.P. means time of possession. And with that vaunted Veer running game, I'll tell you, they can uh, take those long drives down the field. Don't get me wrong. They can capable of breaking big plays as well, but their line gets off. Monterey Trail, time of possession. They can manage that clock. And then next, of course, is that Monterey Trail line surge. Take a good look at those close-ups on that line surge because they get off the football, making it much easier for those running backs to run when you uh, got line surge like their offensive line. Eagles pass protection is very important tonight. O'Connor, Hernandez, Cook, Luke, and company better be blocking because uh, Monterey Trail will be coming hard and putting heat on quarterback Nathan Valencia so it's up front that needs that protect for him MPT as usual in every game there are mistakes penalties and turnovers unfortunately that's part of the game and when they occur they make it either tougher for one team or easier for another team that's a coach's dilemma MP, MPT so let's hope that doesn't play a factor tonight but I'm pretty certain it will it it always seems to play a big factor, particularly in the turnover department. Penalties can be overcome, but turnovers usually are a, a fatal blow, when, especially if there's multiple turnovers. Well, yeah, certainly. And uh, Let's take a look at the matchups here because this is part of the attraction tonight. Well, Veer versus Sprint. We, we've got a solid running game with split backs, a team that runs a football efficiently. That Veer offense is averaging 8.9 per carry. 
So they've got the running backs to do it, and they bring in fresh legs when needed. Metro versus Delta, the pride of the Metro Monterey Trail. First year in the Metro, of course, they destroyed their opposition throughout the whole year. The Delta was up from grabs from the start of it. It was up to about four ball clubs, of which Pleasant Grove was right in the running for that top spot. And next, of course, in the matchups, we have the pass rush of the Mustangs versus the Eagle passing game. And in order for the Eagles to put points on the board tonight, Valencia is going to need protection, and he's going to get the ball down the field because he's got the arm and he's got the legs to extend plays as well. So they need the protection up front. Well, that'll be vital as far as the Eagles' hopes are concerned. And one of the key concerns for Coach T.J. Ewing is Valencia's ability to improvise. On a busted play, he can still make big plays based on his versatility and his athleticism. So we'll see how that factors into the outcome. We got captains meeting at midfield for our upcoming coin toss here. A beautiful evening out here in Elk Grove. Uh, a chill now has, has settled in after the sunset and it'll probably be cold by the time this game is over but it's going to be hot action on the field torrid in fact and the fans that have turned out this evening definitely will be treated to the uh, talent on the field tonight fans still streaming in to mark macris memorial stadium here on the campus of monterey trail high school this is Opening round action of the CIF Sac Joaquin section football championships. It's a division one level playoff game. And we will come right back for tonight's opening kickoff and our starting lineup. Stay with us. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Welcome aboard. There you see our graphic here from Elk Grove at Monterey Trail High School. This is opening round action of the CIF Sac Joaquin Section Football Championships. Monterey Trail hosting Pleasant Grove and our national anthem. The Monterey Trail Marching Band and the Star Spangled Banner. We are set up, table is set, ready to roll. And 
The crowd now starting to resemble what it should be like for a playoff game, Coach Domino. They're still pouring in to Mark Macris Memorial Stadium in anticipation of this opening rounder. Well, I'm glad to see that because it's a late crowd coming in, as you mentioned. I'm looking at the visitor side over there, and I like what I'm seeing. People still coming in. Of course, not not a far drive from Pleasant Grove High School over to here. And uh, these two teams were formerly, uh, you know, in the Delta together and been rivals through the years. So we got a perfect night, little to no wind, uh, temperature dropping, but a beautiful, crisp uh, fall night. That it is, Coach Domino. The NCOA has dispatched a veteran quintet to monitor this evening's playoff opener and keep things fair and square. And it is headed by referee Terry Lockett. He'll be wearing the white cap this evening and have the final say on all calls. Umpire tonight, Cornell Gathing, Kurt Bayer, the headlinesman, Theron Caldwell will be the line judge tonight and the back judge Aaron Vaughn and if needed Terry Howell will serve as our alternate official. Pleasant Grove in their road white jerseys trimmed in red and red trousers there we see TJ Ewing strolling that Mustang sideline. It'll be Pleasant Grove kicking off left to right and Mason Goins to do the honors and the deep receivers Williams, Jackson, and company taken outside the 20 yard line and coming to the near side, turn the corner and get some additional yardage. Chris Lands, number 12, with a nice return and excellent field position upcoming for the Mustangs opening possession. First and 10, they spot the football here at the Monterey Trail 45. Well, that was a nice run back, putting him in great field position. My goodness, right almost at midfield. So here you're going to get a look at this Monterey vaunted veer. And I say this, that the, watch the line surge and watch how hard these running backs run. First play from scrimmage upcoming. Two wideouts dispatched to the right for the Mustangs. Victor Timonen hands off, and they get a five-yard blast to the 50 yard line. Let's take a look at that Mustangs offense headed by QB Victor Timonen. He'll have running backs Williams and Ram Sewer. The wides are Adams and Blanton. Ben Waite the tight end and a very, very good run blocking offensive line as witnessed the great production from a core of backs. Second and five from the 50. A straight ahead smash is contained after about three. It's going to bring up a third and about two. Now for Pleasant Grove, they're down four. Are going to have to be terrific tonight. O'Connor, Cook, Turrentine, and Chow. The backers are on the spot, headed by Matt Nickerson in, in the middle, and Sharman as well. Then that four deep secondary, they will have to stay on the alert. Though Monterey Trail does not pass much, they can sting you with scoring passes. Third and three from the PG-48. Off tackle right. Well, he got, looked like, to the yard line he needed. Then he shoved back, but he might be about a foot short. I'd say he's a foot or two short, and uh, they didn't give him a good mark. He looks about a foot short. Let's take another look. So Nickerson in on that, had him around the waist. Matt Nickerson, 31, the outstanding middle linebacker. And he'll have to be doing that all night. Here's fourth and one. The first roll the dice situation tonight. T.J. Ewing not holding up at all. Turn and give. A power blast is about a five yard run. First down, Monterey Trail. And Nice opening there for Williams, Otha Williams, number 19, who's well, had a terrific year. Well, both, the, both these running backs, watch the blocking up front, watch the hole by the left side, hard driving by Williams, moving the chains. Uh, they can do that to you, and you say no, you to sleep with two, three, four yard gains, but then all of a sudden break one. 41 yard line of Pleasant Grove, Mustangs on the move early. 
A hitch pass right side, incomplete, short. Intended out there in the flat for Prophet Brown. I'm not sure if Timonen had his arm banged on that or not. Well, I just think he underthrew it, threw off his back foot. Um, quite frankly, he was, uh, he saw the opening there and he wanted to get it out of his hands. It kind of almost looked like it slipped. Excellent conditions tonight in terms of visibility, dryness, and so forth. Early on, second and 10 here. Opening drive for the Mustangs. Nothing doing. Nickerson and Nickerson. one other defender wrap that up. Yeah. 35, Elner came in from his safety spot, and he was playing him like a linebacker. Well, they had, they had eight in the box. Watch Elner and Nickerson on this play. Two of them. Ow. They lose two on the play. Third and 12. Prophet Brown had no daylight to run. No, Nickerson is very impressive. And, and of course, safety, uh, Logan Elner's had a terrific year for him. Twin wides to the right. Passing down to Monin. Deep right side, wide open. But he overthrows his receiver. I'll tell you. That could not have been much more open to Brandon Blanton. Well, he didn't have to rush the throw. All he had to do is put the nose up. He puts the nose up in the air. He threw a flat. If we look at it again, you'll see the receiver wide open. He's got to put the nose upstairs a little higher. That was going to be a big gainer, but the Eagles Dodge, some anti-aircraft fire. Punt formation shown by the Mustangs. It'll be Adams to do the booting from midfield. A nice wobbly spiral, good hang time. And it is saved near the goal line and shoved backward and apparently downed at the Eagle Five. How about that? Well, that was great. They got the, they got the good uh, Monterey Trail bounce and putting the Eagles way back there, uh, deep down in their own territory. And actually a nice job uh, done by the Eagles defending uh, Monterey Trail on that first series and actually getting the, getting the football back. Uh, uh, 8.35 only given up. Evidently, uh, they called it a touchback after all. There's a replay as we see the attempted save, and he was in the end zone, so that's neutralized. Out to the 20, first and 10. First play from scrimmage for Pleasant Grove. Nathan Valencia calling the shots at the QB position. Triple wide to the left, but they keep and skirt left, and Valencia's got about a 12-yard run. Let's take a look at this Eagles offense and the ringleader here, Valencia, number 13. He's had a banner season. Weinberg, the veteran running back, and four wideouts. They don't come much better in an offensive line that must pass protect tonight. First down from the 32. Gain of 12. Triple wide to the right on this formation, they flop it over. They stay on the ground and there's nothing doing. Weinberg got greeted hard on that. Let's take a look at that outstanding rampaging Mustang defense that just shut that play down for a one yard run. Wilson, Calvin, Keenan and Broadway up front. They work four backers and you're not gonna see too many better linebackers than Marcus Jones and Antonio Williams and then just three deep in the secondary, so they're taking some chances out there. Well, they are. Uh, they, they're playing some man under, what we call man under. Play fake, Valencia's got time. Fire right, and he misses. Wide open. An open receiver out there, Vieira. Third and nine. Vieira wide open. You see Valencia play faking right off the fingertips of Vieira. That ball is catchable. So it brings up third and nine. Football at the Eagle 33. Two wide receivers to the right, three to the left. There's motion down the line. 
He's flushed and has to unload and has a receiver who's shoved out of bounds near the first down marker. Excellent job that time by Trey Kennedy on the reception. He's short about a half a yard, Will, but I would not, would not be surprised if the Eagles go for it. Adams with the shove out of bounds to prevent the first down, but the Eagles are going to go for it here on fourth and one. Longer count this time. Well, for they'll Valencia. end up punting. He's trying to draw them off sides. They'll call time or unsuccessful. Wow. Big blast off the left side, an easy first down. And Chris Weinberg is a load. Well, he can be a very important factor in tonight's ball game. Well, I'm impressed with that, but I'm also impressed with O'Connor Hernandez and Barubi getting off the football. I'll tell you, they had a good push up front. Here you see the handoff to Weinberg. He angles left and takes on two tacklers and falls forward. So it's a first down. Eagles convert. Turn and give, Weinberg breaks two tackles, he's loose, cuts to the middle, and he's dropped inside the 30-yard line. About a 20-yard run there, Chris Weinberg, the X Factor tonight. Well, look at that big hole and watch the hard running. He goes vertical hard, runs like a fullback, doesn't he? Look at this, up the field. Twenty three yards on that run. First and ten Eagles. Working downhill now from the Mustang 31. Three wide receivers to the near side. This is the kind of field position Valencia likes. Turn and fake. He's flushed and dropped. Probable sack there. About a one-yard loss, maybe two. We'll see about the spot, but good pass pressure that time. Call it a two-yard loss, second and 12 upcoming. Well, there you see him under heavy pressure, and you see a couple of missed blocks up front, and they're going to have to protect for him tonight because he's got the arm, and if he gets pass protection by that front five, O'Connor, Hernandez, Cook, Barubi, and... and uh, Luke, that's what he needs. Double wides left and right. Pistol formation. Here's Valencia with hand signals now. And whistles are going to kill this place. Something well, wasn't right. Backfield in motion by that man in motion. Our game referee this evening, Terry Lockett. Backfield in motion. Prior the snap. Got a false start. Offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So compounds the problem, second and 17 now with the football back to the 38 on the five-yard penalty. And we'll see how much pass pressure comes on this play. They go for the draw, but it's shut down. And a possible fumble recovery. We'll wait for our officials to sort this out. I guess not. Getting up off the bottom of the pile, Devin Hernandez. Well, the one official ruled one way. I'm glad they waited. Here's another look, Weinberg wrapped up by Mario Keenan and the ball had already squirted loose. Well, fortunate for Hernandez, Devin Hernandez to recover that fumble. Third and 20 from the Mustang 41, now or never. Valencia gets flushed out of there and he has to run it and he's got all kinds of room. Left sideline, a cut back. Breaks a tackle at the 10 and falls forward to the seven. Well, I'll give credit to Valencia because if I were him, I probably would have run out of bounds when he had a chance, Will. He took a big hit. 
He broke one tackle, but he took a big hit. Let's take another look. All right, Valencia under pressure now. Flushes the pocket. Goes off down the sideline, shows good speed. Yeah. Well, picking up sizable yards for moving the chains. Twenty nine yard run. Motion in the backfield. They hand off and run it with Weinberg and he makes the five. Second and goal. Actually outside the five at the six. So give him a gain of two on that. So Weinberg continuing to be the factor that's going to hopefully balance Pleasant Grove's offense between the great passing of Valencia. Yeah, they need a, a great performance out of him running inside. Valencia wants to throw. Poorly thrown. It's intercepted at the seven, and it's going to be a cakewalk down the left sideline. Can anyone catch him? I don't know. Antonio Williams, straight he touched down. Mustangs on a deflected Interception by Antonio Williams. Approximately 93 yards. That was kind of special. <laughs> well, it certainly was. And what happened there is just what Coach Matt Costa says he didn't want to happen is turnovers. And here they are in a nice drive down the field with uh, Valencia running uh, performing with his arm and his legs and then and then get that pick by Williams Antonio Williams on a deflected ball Well presence of mind and alertness oftentimes when a ball's tapped up here's a word from our game referee Terry Lockett You're trying to like twin me We have a sideline warning Monterey Trail. It's the first warning. Okay, sideline warning. A little too exuberant after that. Quite a turnaround there. The long interception TD return for Antonio Williams. And it is six to nothing. Mustangs on a defensive play. Tough luck for Valencia and the Eagles. So coming on for an apparent PAT, Diego Soto. Now the shift. He's a left footer. Good snap, spot clean, boot on the way and got it. At 324, the first. Mustangs jump in front. Here's Howe on the lob, off the fingertips and picked by Williams, nobody there. It was deflected by Jacob Kachu, and we will be back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Okawasa with the kickoff return from inside the 10, and it's great downfield coverage to drop him shy of the 20. So below average field position upcoming for the Eagles after a shocking turnaround, changing a solid drive into a scoring opportunity on the interception. Well, the Eagles had the ball for five minutes and 11 seconds, moving the chains down to the where the ball was 
intercepted on the five yard line, return 95 by A. Williams. What a turnaround. Well, that's his fourth interception of the season. He had three coming in, but that one was bigger than the rest based on the score. Weinberg loose again, trying to turn the corner. I'll tell you, he has been a key factor that has prevented Monterey Trail from really teeing off on the pass rush. They have to well, be much more conscious. Here's another look. Well, they, they've got it. Good hard running by Weinberg, I'll tell you that. He's keeping people, uh, like you said, Will, he's got to keep you honest inside and let Monterey Trail figure that, the, you know, they can run the ball as well. 11 yards on that one. Here he comes again, right up the middle. Nobody's home. Hit and dropped, falling inside the 45. Well, well he, that is an interesting wrinkle in the game plan, one that I thought could be pertinent. Well, I'll tell you something. That hole, you and I could have run the football in that hole, Will. It was wide open. It looked like draw action. Now they're giving Weinberg a break here on the sideline, taking him out for a couple of plays. Let's have a look at this. Just a plain old simple dive. Wow. Weinberg has racked up 39 yards on those last two carries. They're back in business just about where they were when they threw the interception. Vieira shows the motion. And Valencia keeps, finds a little hole, and slides ahead for about a six-yard pickup. Well, he could have gotten a little more. His receivers have got to block downfield. Excellent fake by Valencia to Weinberg. Now, they've got to respect Weinberg, and they do. And just Valencia followed Weinberg right back into the hole. Outstanding. So we'll give Valencia six on the play. Clock rolling here with about a minute 35 in this rapidly played opening quarter. Double wide to the left. They stay on the ground and big dividends. Another first down carry for the Eagles showing off their run game. Wheeler had the carry that time. Watch the give to Carson Wheeler here, running inside. I'm impressed with the blocking up front with Barube, Hernandez, Cook, O'Connor, and Luke are opening up some holes here against that Monterey defense. Gain of 10 by Wheeler, first down at the Monterey Trail 27. This has been an impressive drive. Turn and give, big hole, look out. Wheeler Dropped again. inside the 15 as they give it to Wheeler. Move the chains first down. Watch the holes inside. I tell you, they are opening them up and faking. Look at the push by that Pleasant Grove line. Wow. 15 yards on that carry by Wheeler after 10 on the carry before that. It's been the ground game that is really charging this drive. Triple wide to the left, but here comes some motion the other way. Not this time. They get a couple on the play. It's stuffed at the 10. Yeah, they're back with Weinberg. They gave him a blow for about three or four plays. And I'll tell you, Wheeler filled in admirably uh, for Weinberg. And now Weinberg back in the game. Now, he could set you up with inside running like that and then suddenly pull the ball back and have a receiver wide open. Because right now, they're forcing the linebackers to stay at home watching the run. Lathan Snipes with that last tackle, limiting that play to two yards. And we have played one at the end of the first quarter here in Elk Grove at Monterey Trail in this Division I opening round playoff game. 7-0 Monterey Trail, but the Eagles on the move. We'll be right back.
It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. Nice to have you with us this evening for Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week. We open second quarter action. Pleasant Grove deep in the red zone, but down 7 nothing, trying to square things here in this playoff opener. Second and nine from the Monterey Trail 11. Two wides on each side. Kennedy was in motion. Valencia throws on the run to the corner. Overthrown. Incomplete. Third and nine. They sent the motion man to the side where the pass was. Kennedy, number 20, cleared. Yeah, 20 was open. He, all he had to do, he made a quick turn and Tony, 20 was open for that quick look in Kennedy, Trey Kennedy, where up about eight, nine yards right by the flag was. Third and nine, key play here. I'm sure it's four down territory, depending on what coach Matt Costa would like to do here. Up the middle running, gang tackling inside the five. Wow, what power. Well, Valencia is showing me something with his legs. Outstanding, outstanding run. They're bringing in the beef, and I, I believe they're going to go for it. What an effort by quarterback Valencia. Watch the fake inside. He takes it himself. Good hard running. He got hit by four defenders there and still fell forward. That was impressive. First and goal from the one power formation. Everybody packed in tight. Well, he got a surge from his people. He should have scored. Touch down Eagles. Valencia put the capper on it from one yard out. Boy, that was a huge scrum. 7-6 now, things have tightened up. Well, on well. for the PAT. We'll see if Mason Goins keeps his head down and ties this thing up. Be ready for anything. High snap, spotted clean, chip shot, and got it. Let's take a look here at 11:23, early second, how the Eagles found the end zone. Stay with us. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. A squib kick by Mason Goins, but the play is blown dead before it really gets activated. We're tied up at 7-7 here early in the second quarter. Well, we talked about time of possession, Will, on Monterey Trail. 
but the time of possession in the first quarter was dominated by the Pleasant Grove Eagles who dominated 8-11 out of 12 minutes out of the first quarter. Pleasant Grove had the football. Time of possession. Football will be re-kicked from the 35-yard line as the twin returners move up for Monterey Trail. And it's another squib taken on one high bounce and sideline running room, big speed. Watch out and a return all the way nearly to the 20. That play backfired on the Eagles. Wow. Wow, that surprised me again. You got another chance and you run that short kick after scoring and tying this football game. The Mustangs set up beautifully at the Eagle 21 yard line. That return, approximately 40 yards, just shy of that. Tight formation, turn and give, and a burst up the middle inside the 15 to about the 12. And lands with the carry. Gain of eight, another look. Boy, Land hit that hole in a hurry. Outstanding. I mean, he really got off the football. Second and two from the 13 yard line. Chris Lands. Timonen, hands off, straight ahead blast. Wow, nice opening right there. And I'll tell you, Williams took advantage of it. Oh, he certainly did. A good line surge up front. Talakai and Keenan got off the football. That looks more like Mustang football, those last two. Timeout on the field as we see the replay there. We'll be right back after this short break. Don't wander off. Lots more to come. Well, there's that excellent Monterey Trail marching band putting in their share of energy and enthusiasm. And that's a busted play that's going nowhere. Probable loss, and it was not synchronized. More of a concern, however, is down here on the Monterey Trail sideline. Williams being attended to, they're looking at his right ankle. Well, he came out gimping on it last run, Will. Tough defensive line play here. Second and six. Wow, so far inspired defensive play by the Eagles as a touchdown. Well, everybody tackled the wrong man and didn't realize that number 20 Ramsour had the ball. It was a great fake in the backfield by quarterback Timonen. Three players tackled Timonen on that. But it's a six yard TD for Ramsour. On for the PAT. Diego Soto, left-footed booter, 59. Mechanics good, line drive, got it. 
at 9.42. Early second, Mustangs back on the board. And everybody got jerked on that. Ram Sewer just kept chugging. Wow, if I was the Eagles, I'd be upset. We'll be right back. Well, unfortunately. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. The Soto kickoff fumbled and grabbed at the 10 and a burst. He's loose. Look out. And Soto able to stay back and drop him on a solo tackle that was as clutch as you can get. However, great field position on that return and a tremendous yeah. burst put on by Okuusa. Okawusa, big speed, but could not get past the last man. Well, one move, <laughs> he found that last man. First down at midfield from the 50. Triple wide receivers to the near side for Valencia and company. They run the football off tackle right and get about five on the play to the Monterey Trail 45. 44 make it, second and six. Well, once again, Weinberg, Weinberg must is looks to me like he's going to have a hundred yard night the way he's playing. That would not surprise me. Again, three wideouts to the left on second and six. Nine minute mark, early second quarter. Nice to have you with us here for the hometown sports game of the week. They run the football. It's stacked and limited to maybe a yard gain. Good D that time, Weinberg handled. Third and five. Well, it looked like quarterback Valencia was reluctant on the on the read option uh, to give him the ball. It looked very, very delayed here on that second down play, and it only got them a yard or so. Well, it almost looked like he wanted to pull it back out. They're Holy running. This read option is kind of keeping that defense of Monterey Trail at home. Double wide outs to each side. Weinberg, the back in there, they fake it to him and Valencia keeps and comes to the near side. Drag down for a loss. What containment. That was some outstanding defensive play by the Mustangs getting excellent effort. Let's take another look and see the lateral containment here. There it is. Marcus Jones, perhaps the finest and most underrated tackler in the area. Fourth and eight. Football at the Monterey Trail, 48. Punt formation shown. Kennedy boots it to the right side. It takes a backward, then straight up bounce, and it's going to be down outside the Monterey Trail, 20. So an effective punt, no return, but call it a stop for the Monterey Trail defense. Does this guy know that? That's Eli Gula, Elijah Gula. T.J. Ewing probably feeling a bit better with that 14-7 lead and uh, seeing some characteristics that his team is settling down now after kind of an unusual start to this game. Well, they're not used to giving up that kind of yardage. 
And they're not used to giving up that time of possession that they've been given up in that first quarter. From the Monterey Trail 23, first down. Well, they smash left and get a few out to the 25. Short yardage. Well, right now, linebacker Matt Nickerson is in on half the tackles. I'm really impressed. He wears number 31. Wow. One of the best. Gain of two, second and eight. Football parked at the Mustang 25 as we see coaches along that Pleasant Grove sideline anxiously looking on. Here's a toss, it's well diagnosed. Great lateral containment, but a missed tackle allows the runner to slip away. How about that? And a flag flies. Well, I'll tell you, Budget did a nice job making something out of nothing there. And we'll wait and see what Terry Lockett has to say. I should say Brown. Prophet Brown. Oh, my goodness. Personal foul against the Mustangs. He's got a dead ball. Personal foul on the offense. Late hit. 15 yard penalty to be third down. Okay, Lauren Goodman has more. What you got, Goody? Trail. You probably saw number 19, Otha Williams, go down. He's suffering right now with a right injury to the ankle. We'll see if he comes back. He got the ankle taped up and he's back on the sideline with his team, but we'll see if he'll be, have a gingerly return on his way back. Will. Thanks, Goody. Well, it looks like it's going to be a pass interference call on a ball that was probably not catchable based on the position of the defense. Make your own decision. Let's take a look. Timon and just kind of put that up for grabs. And the defender had his back turned. Not a good thing to do as far as Namika Okawusa. But a penalty is going to go the other way. Perhaps offensive. Let's see what Terry Lockett has to say. Got pass interference on the offense. That penalty is refused. Fourth down. Fourth and eight from the 25. Punt formation shown on fourth and 20 from the 13. At the goal line, high snap. It's going to take an excellent Monterey Trail roll trickling all the way inside the Pleasant Grove 45 yard line where it's out of bounds at the 44. Well, they were very fortunate with a 20 yard roll. Uh, and ended up fine getting it ball up to the 45 yard line. Fundamentals now, let's go. Okay, so the Pleasant Grove defense <clears throat> has slammed the door for much of a sticky first half. We're still, though, midway second quarter. 14-7 Monterey Trail, but Valencia and company back on the field for the Eagles operating from their own 44. Valencia keeps after faking to Weinberg, and he's ahead for about four before he's shoved back. I think that uh, most people are surprised. I know Monterey Trail is on the amount of times that that he's keeping the ball and running the football. Valencia, again, watch him in here. Mario Keenan with the tackle. Gain of four, second and six. Clock rolling at the 515. Flip side of quarter number two. Twin wides to each side, but here's Vieira in motion. 
And Valencia throws out there to Nathan Valencia, but it's a drop. Well, well, that's a rare play right there because we're going to promote five receivers on this Pleasant Grove team that are all excellent, Vieira being one of them. Kennedy, Kachu, Gula, Lochran Smith, and Vieira. You can see there the numbers of touchdowns and the numbers of receptions all coming from squadron leader Nathan Valencia. Third and six. He rolls and looks and fires on the run. A sideline strike put on the money. That was a dart directly into the arms of Jacob Kachu. And that's a first down for the Eagles. Well, I'll show you. Valencia can throw on the run from the pocket and out of the pocket. Watch him roll right, turn that shoulder up the field, and throw a dart, as you mentioned, to Cashew right there on that sideline. Excellent timing by quarterback Nathan Valencia. 13 yards on that hookup. First down. Valencia, they run it inside. A quick opener and it's a big gain as Weinberg again paying dividends, packing the football in a timeout taken by Monterey Trail. We'll pause ourselves. Don't wander off, we'll be right back. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Well, there you see the Eagles squadron leader, Nathan Valencia, engineering an excellent offense. They're down 14-7, however, but looking to pick up a first on second and two from the 39. Good protection, fire right, dropped! Hard to believe Trey Kennedy with great hands, unable to clutch that one. Wow. The squad leader is on the money. Valencia, right there, watch it, right in the hands, unfortunately. Wow. Third and two. Just a straight handoff and a dive, and Weinberg. Let's see where they spot him. That's going to be enough to move the chains. First down, Weinberg. Watch that straight dive handoff to Weinberg running hard inside. Not much of a hole, but he, he runs hard. He runs vertical north-south. Great job by Weinberg. Gain of three to pick that up. It's first down and 10 from the 28. Just over four minutes to go in the half. Valencia held onto the pill and leaped forward. Penalty marker dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Well, let's take another look and see if we can see the hold. There's that fake to Weinberg, and Valencia keeps it for five, but it's coming back. Terry Lockett has the answer. On the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. The 
So they move the football back to the Monterey Trail 38 yard line. 10 yards on the penalty from the spot where the hold was de detected. First and 20. Cheerleaders trying to get some enthusiasm going, but it's going to have to be done out there as we see motion in that Eagle backfield. They fake to the motion man, set up a screen. Right side, it's open. Weinberg, 20, 10, chase him. Touchdown, Eagles. On the misdirected flip, Weinberg takes it home on a first and 20. 38 yards on the scoring connection. I love the call. That is an outstanding screen call to the short side of the field. Outstanding call and well executed. That pulls the Eagles within one, 14-13. Goins with the PAT on the way, got it at 339. I love this. Here is, great is how they got even. Plenty of room to run, and Weinberg does that very well. Don't go away. More to come on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Hi, I'm Peter, and there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. To learn more, visit savethefood.com. We're set for the Eagles kickoff here after they drove the field to tie the game at 14. It's to the near sideline and it's gonna be out of bounds for a penalty. Just 3.39 left here in the first half. And the game continues to tack on additional intrigue. Well, what we didn't expect was the T.O.P. dominated by Pleasant Grove. And there you see Coach here concerned about that, talking to his players. Well, he called the timeout during that scoring drive when the ball was out at about the 30-yard line and had some things to say to his defensive unit. I wish I could have overheard that conversation. But here's the Mustangs operating first and 10. Up the middle, a broken tackle and a first down run. Rams, your tough running. Had to give the Rams, sure. Breaking tackles, picking up sizable game, moving the chains, and that's one thing they'll come. Otha Williams, who is out now with an injury, and Ramsour. We'll see who that other running back is in that ball game here now, taking Williams' spot. 3.15 to go, clock rolling. Good line containment. As we see here, these running backs are terrific for the Monterey Trail Mustangs. Head coach TJ Ewing has four quality backs. Uh, any team in the area would like to have any of those players on their squad. Yeah, now Pro Prophet Brown in there. And it's amazing he can't start with this group. Gain of three, second and seven. Nothing doing. Look at that push back. Oh, my goodness. Well, Big time Jack O'Connor just wiped out lands on that play. Well, I can tell you Torrentine was in there too. Torrentine, 6'1", but 290. I'll tell you, he's helping control that line of scrimmage. They lose two, make it third and nine. Football back to the Monterey Trail 49. 
And a timeout taken. It's taken by Pleasant Grove at the 209. And we'll be right back after this short break. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Well, here's a sampling of this Pleasant Grove defense. <laughs> wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't want to be the ball carrier on that one, and Mr. Lands uh, took the brunt of that assault. Third and nine from the 49 of Monterey Trail. Look at that tight formation. He's gonna roll and throw! He had his best wide receiver open, but Kevin Adams couldn't get to that toss. And there's been three occasions this evening where Timonen has had receivers open and down the field. Let's take another look. Have a look there. You see Timonen rolling, half roll right, trying to get too much of a lead and too outside. Punt formation shown, Adams to do the punting. And the single safety back there, Namika Okwusa. Whistles are gonna kill this play before the snap and punt. start offense five yard penalty still fourth down so a false start cost the Mustangs five make it fourth and 13 football move back to the 44 again Adams positioned as if to punt but again whistles are going to abort this play Now we have a brief conference with our game referee, Terry Lockett, and the head linesman. Well, the walk-off is against Monterey Trail, but no explanation yet. Well, the old MPT haunting Monterey Trail right now. Penalties. Certainly is. Nearly blocked, but Adams gets it away, and it's going to roll dead inside the Eagle 20. Things getting a little chippy out there. It's a 14-14 tie. And we got a long way to go. TJ Ewing not happy about this turn of events. Well, you could read Coach TJ Ewing's lips there as he's telling his teammates, come on, let's get going here. First and 10 for the Eagles. They break huddle. They're working from their 19-yard line here with 1.47 to go in the half. 
triple wide receivers to the right side. Weinberg has the pill and he's dropped as he gets to the 20 yard line. He has been the most significant X factor in this first half. Well, you know how hard he runs, so watch some submarine up front uh, a tripping over his own lineman as well as the Monterey Trail linemen who are submarining uh, trying to trip up the offensive line of of the Pleasant Grove. Well, I'm still trying to get past the point of him being 5'8 and 175. <laughs> well, Who are they, trying to they, kick? they don't ask your height and weight when they try to tackle you. He's just running over people. And he's got the frame to do it. They hand off and run it again, and the play is stuffed again. Well, so two running plays gets him about a total of six yards. Well, he's had receivers wide open dropping balls, so he can run that. You watch him in here as Weinberg picks up about three. And now he can fake to Weinberg and hit that quick out on the right side. 30 seconds to go, clock rolling here. They're in the danger zone. Eagles certainly don't want to make a mistake after playing catch up most of this first half. Valencia keeps, follows some blocking. And there the whistle blows after everybody stands around and watches. Well, that's what uh, is getting me because Valencia is keeping his legs moving and I don't see the defense putting him down. They're all reaching and grabbing. Adams in on that stop and let's take another look. Watch, I mean, it looks like the defense is not gonna put him down. Adams had him around the ankles, but the half has concluded and a rather bizarre, though very interesting first half in this CIF Sac Joaquin section playoff opener, division one style, a 14-14 tie. And we've seen some things we expected and several things we have not expected in this first half tonight. We're gonna keep it right here because shortly we'll be joining Lauren Goodman and she'll have a word with uh, TJ Ewing here and it'll be interesting to see what his comments are after playing to a tie. Well, let's toss it down to field level, I guess. Uh, what you got, Goody? Leader TJ Ewing, coach, you probably scouted all week for Valencia, but after you planned him for a first half, how do you guys contain his mobility or kind of get some contact to him to limit his viewing and his ability to run? Uh, he's a good player. You know, we didn't expect the same that he's doing right now and uh, doing a great job leading his team. Uh, I think we'll be fine in the second half. We just, we got to get going offensively. Um, put a couple, the other some drives, but we get the playing defense coming out in the second half, so we, uh, We'll figure it out. Coach, the last few timeouts there, you were really intense with your team, talking about their focus. How is the conversation going into the locker room right now? What do you want to get the message across to your team? Well, we just had to make a couple adjustments. So we're just trying to get personnel right. And uh, that was just make sure you communicate, tell guys the roles and what they're doing. And, uh, I thought our guys did a good job. I mean, uh, it was a good half. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank Will. Thank you very much, Goody. Yeah, we could see certainly that uh, Coach Ewing not delighted with how things went in the first half, but sounding confident about uh, flipping the script in the second half. And I think we're going to have a heck of a second half coming up here on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. We'll be right back for more of tonight's coverage on Access Sacramento. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play more. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. 
Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now, are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. All right, listen, we all need a little nudge sometimes. I don't function without coffee in the morning, but it is going to take more than a double mochaccino to help you here. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Danny, no lo puedo hacer. Quiero oír. Danny, lo voy a hacer. DMC, liking your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb. Just keeping it real. <laughs> Louder! Louder! I'll meet again by G E D. Come on! Get your hey, G E D. Hey. Can you keep it down, Mama? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Mark Macri Stadium, where you see the score right now is Pleasant Grove 14, Monterey Trail 14. But now I'm here with the leader at Monterey Trail, the ple their principal. Now, what's going on on campus? What's been happening this year so far? Well, we're having a great beginning to the year, of course. Our school culture and climate is super uh, excited to be at school, working with our Mustangs. Um, new, new leadership, so that's always a different thing, but the teachers are super uh, embracing of our new leadership. We're uh, excited to have all the fans here, have a great beginning of the season for these guys, and hoping to see the playoffs go really far as well. Well, you guys is really big on community and your networking. Can you just talk to me about the families that are out here tonight and then supporting you guys throughout the year? Mm -hmm. Well, community's our biggest thing, right? Everybody wants to feel welcomed and happy and excited to support the students and feel like they're welcome to be on campus. And these guys come out every game dedicated to cheer on our team, no matter what the competition is. And they're excited to see some great play tonight. As you can see, it's super close. And having um, our community as our rival as well, right? So PG and us being both Elk Grove uh, Unified School District, it's fun to invite them to our home and our community is excited to welcome them and have a challenge tonight. It's really a great thing to see. Well, there's a great atmosphere out here, but can you talk to me about your student athletes? I know Coach Ewing leads the way with preaching leadership and really making sure that these guys are student athletes, but just talk to me about your student athletes on campus and how their leadership is impacting the school. Right. Well, obviously, we expect them to be role models, and they've taken that to heart, and Coach Ewing and his crew do a really good job, as well as our whole athletic department, at talking with the kids to have integrity, represent our core values, uh, show everybody else what it's like to be a Mustang and do what's right on campus in the classroom and then also out when you're representing the school and uh, we love our staff for that and excited that our, our scholar athletes take uh, leadership roles in the classroom as well as on the campus and out in the community so well thanks for sharing a little bit of time with me again this year we'll be right back from this break Good one, son. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. First, we went oh. deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. And then we went on Thunder Shark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. <laughs> I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. There's a quiet battle happening on our streets. Pedestrians are acting indestructible. And drivers act like they own the road. They're both wrong. 
Be aware, be alert. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. Every time you purchase a fishing license or register your boat, you're helping to preserve our nation's coastlines, lakes, rivers, and streams, protecting memories for generations to come. Learn how your participation in boating and fishing can help the environment at takemefishing.org slash conservation. Well, we're happy to have you with us this evening for Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week. It's the CIF Sac Joaquin section playoff opening round. And we've got uh, a whale of a Division I contest here. We're locked up a 14-14 tie, Pleasant Grove and Monterey Trail. And Coach Domino, there have been some, <laughs> as we said earlier, some anticipated things we saw and other uh, parts of the play that have surfaced tonight for the first time. Well, we have. As we said in our pregame, we uh, would assume Monterey Till Trail would do what they normally do, and that is uh, run that veer, dominate the clock, and time of possession. Uh, we've seen the opposite thus far in the first half. Uh, certainly not known for their ground game, Pleasant Grove has showed, uh, particularly with Chris Weinberg, they can run the football. And between Weinberg and Valencia, they are keeping uh, keeping Monterey Trail at home defensively. That they are. I have to agree. That's a key component. And here's the rankings compiled by the Imperator after 10 weeks of regular season play coming into the action of playoffs. Okay, the final regular season you see there at Folsom on top again, uh, only beaten in an in a non-league game by uh, De La Salle. Intercom, undefeated 10-0, Terry Starks Ball Club, 10-0, Oak Ridge. Uh, just having a tremendous year by, uh, with Eric up there. Monterey Trail, you're seeing number four here tonight. Uh, I'm sure that they'll come out the second half uh, loaded for bear. CJ's club usually does. Capital Christian having a phenomenal year. Uh, undefeated in the league, eight and two overall. Davis winning the Delta. Uh, for the first time in many, many years and uh, playing tonight as we speak. Del Oro, number seven, uh, having another good year in that tough SFL. Center going unbeaten this year and having probably one of their best teams. Placer uh, with uh, head coach Joey Montoya having another great year at eight and two. Rockland under new coach Adams doing great. Kasumna's Oaks had a great season finishing second to Davis. And Vista Del Lago finishing second to Capital Christian, only losing to Capital Christian in a in the league game. And then you got 13 Rialinda in the red zone. Jesuit finishing strong with Susac at the helm. Elk Grove 15. Christian Brothers 16, finishing third in that league. Antelope with Coach Ray finishing strong in that tough league. Yuba City 18. 19 under new coach Joe Catalico having a good year, uh, giving inter uh, Intercom all he wanted, and Cass Aroble with Coach Horner having another great year back in the playoffs after having a phenomenal year yet last year. Pleasant Grove tonight not acting like a 21, believe me. Uh, they're playing more like they're in somewhere in the top 20 or better. Bradshaw Christian jumping into our riding the bubble, having a great year. Colfax, as usual, in there. Rosemont having a terrific season. And Johnson, once again, returning to not only the bubble, but uh, somewhere in the top 25 for the first time in close to 20 years. Now, we have to definitely salute the Hiram Johnson Warriors. Um, a, a tremendous turnaround to a program that had been mired in just terrible conditions and and poor performances for decades. So, so hats off to the Warriors. Let's check in with Lauren Goodman. I think she has some updates from around the area. Goody. 
Yeah, guys, I thought it was perfect timing after those rankings from Domino to kind of give us some other scores that we were looking at around the city that are happening tonight. Yuba City versus Christian Brothers. Yuba City 28, Christian Brothers 13. Gregory is facing Davis tonight. Gregory 7, Davis 20. Whitney is up over Lincoln right now, 28 to 14. Del Oro is down to Turlock right now, Del Oro 7, Turlock 21. River Valley and Vista Del Lago are in a 7-7 tie. Antelope and Ponderosa is also in a 14-14 tie. And Elk Grove has the lead 20 to 7 over Oakmont. Will. Well, we love updates from the scoreboard, especially this time of year. And, you know, the closer we get to second half action and beyond, the more dicey things get. As we know, it's single elimination. Well, most of these games are halftime, Will, and they got another half to go like we do here. Anything can happen. And as we know, in playoff competition, it's one and done. So these clubs have got to put it out for four quarters. Stay with us. Back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Maddie, congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not home. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. We're all tied up at halftime here at Monterey Trail as the host Mustangs are even at 14 all with Pleasant Grove. Let's check in with Lauren Goodman standing by with a special guest. Goody? Well, guys, I'm here with the other side, the Eagles. Coach Costa, how did you feel about your team's first half performance? Uh, you know, besides that botched uh, screenplay, I felt like it was pretty good. Um, you know, our defense is playing well. Um, our offensive execution is good, especially in the run game. Um, we just got to keep out, keep coming out and rowing the boat. I mean, as long as we keep doing that, we're going to be okay. Coach, your team seems really t calm, collected, really focused right now. How do you feel the second half is going to have to go so things can swing in your direction? Exactly the same. No different. You just got to keep, got to keep rowing the boat. Sounds good, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Will. Thanks, Goody. Row, row, row your boat. It's not too gentle out there, but. It could get, uh, in fact, uh, treacherous with high waves and uh, beware of the rocks. 
Coach, we're very impressed with Pleasant Grove's defense. Throughout the course of the season, they gave up a ton of points, particularly against the teams with the superior records in the Delta League. But tonight, they have played fierce, especially in that interior line. Well, they certainly have O'Connor, Cook, Torrentine, Chow have done a tremendous job up front. And, of course, linebacker Nickerson really impresses me tonight. I mean, he gets to the football and he makes it happen. James Torrentine is wearing 70 tonight, and I'll tell you something. He's having a terrific game. And they are doing a job, really, in terms of time of possession. They're dominating the clock. They're running that read option offense, and they're running more than I think most people, including Monterey Trail, expected tonight, Will. I agree with that. Coach Costa calls it a, a uh, spread option. He's got those five wide receivers we singled out, and Valencia is a real craftsman at keeping defenses guessing as to what they're going to do. And again, I say the biggest X factor tonight that has surfaced with an exemplary performance, it is Chris Weinberg, the running back for Pleasant Grove. My unofficial stats have him with eight carries for 61 yards plus a 38-yard touchdown reception. Uh, that has been a significant difference in tonight's contest so far. Well, uh, give him credit, even when there aren't holes, and there have been holes um, with Hernandez and Barubi Cook, no Connor up front opening up those holes and with Luke. But when there isn't, he runs hard. You know, they have him listed at 175. You and I both are looking at him and saying <laughs> he runs like he's 190 to 200. He's very strong. He's strong after the tackle. He hits the hole hard. And then I am amazed at uh, – his uh, upfield speed and downfield speed that he has uh, for a stocky guy. He's a hard-nosed north-south runner. He is, and he's stocky yet uh, quite a frame. I, you know, I would guess something close to six feet tall and 195. Um, but that has been a tremendous bonus in tonight's ball game. Credit Coach Costa and the offensive coordination coming into this game is there you see the monterey trail mustangs bursting out of their game entry gate and uh would have been very interested to hear what coach ewing had to say during the intermission but you can best believe there was some fire behind it well i'm sure between offensive coordinator rick arcuri who's been with uh tj throughout the career here an ex-athletic director, I'm sure that uh, they got things figured out and they want to play Monterey Trail type ball, which means move the chains, uh, you know, get off the football up front, get a good line surge and use those running backs. I'm not certain if we're going to see Williams come back in this ball game, but they got enough depth in that position. Stay with us. We'll be right back for second half action. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. We are just about ready for the second half kickoff in a ball game that's been quite unusual yet most provocative throughout the first half. It's a 14-14 tie. And speaking of things we didn't expect, Coach Domino, 
One of them that stands out to me is Monterey Trail in the entire first half was unable to show off their speed except for two plays and both of those were flukes. One of them was the tipped ball that was intercepted, certainly not a planned play, and the other was the second kickoff after a penalty that enabled a sideline run down into the red zone. Those are the only two times speed really showed itself for the speedy Monterey Trail Mustangs. Well, I agree with you. Uh, those were the only signs of speed. When you look at that uh, running backs, Williams, Wilson, Brown, and all the speed they have, uh, Singleton, Rays is injured, but Williams and Ramsour, they have not broken one. That pick play of 95 yards was, uh, we didn't count on that. That's a defensive play. A defensive play, nor did we count on Pleasant Grove electing to kick off twice with a pooch kick and it bounded crazy and the return man took it down the sideline. Otherwise, the big speed factor has been neutralized. Credit the Pleasant Grove defensive unit and the defensive game plan put in for tonight's contest. However, we got a long way to go, Coach. We do, <laughs> and who would ever think that if you said in 24 minutes of first half action unofficially, that Pleasant Grove Eagles would have the football for 16 plus minutes out of 24. They are doing, I guess, what normally everybody expects Monterey Trail to do, but are not doing. Well, so Monterey Trail is going to have to run the gambit here. The uh, second half kickoff, when it does occur, will belong to Pleasant Grove as the two teams are trading ends in compliance with where they finished the first half. So Monterey Trail will be kicking off to open the second half from our left to our right. And we are just about ready for third quarter action in a 14-14 tie. Twin returners dispatched. Trey Kennedy, number 20. And Speedy Nukima Okuusa, number nine stationed at the Eagle Five. So there's the boot from Diego Soto. Kennedy from outside his five, breaks through. He's got a hole, trying to get loose, but dragged down as he reaches midfield. And the Mustangs gave up a lot on that return. 42 yards on the return. Nakai Broadway prevented it from further damage. Let's take a look at the Trey Kennedy run back. Yeah, he looks like a hurdler in that one. Broadway with the stop. And they have the football first and 10 at the 50 yard line. Valencia back out there wheeling and dealing. He keeps it, finds a hole, breaks outside, cuts in, and has himself a first down run of about 12 or 13 yards. He changed directions three times on the play. Well, let me tell you something, Nathan. Valencia is really motivated. I never knew that he could run this hard. Watch this fake. And keeping the football, veering to the outside, and running with passion. 12 yards on the carry. They'll work from the 38-yard line. Three wide receivers to the left. Turn and give, run play, what a shot right there to bring an abrupt halt to the Weinberg run. Well, he still picked up about six, a little more than six. Let's see who shivered his timbers on this. Perhaps a Marcus Jones? Well, they're not gonna try to tackle him high, for sure. Gain of six, second and four. Football at the 32. We're just underway here in the third quarter. Nice to have you with us. Look at that formation to the right. A gap in the line. And Weinberg has the pill and he is dropped by three Mustangs, led by Broadway and help from his friends. 
Watch Weinberg pick up a couple here inside. Uh, just short about a yard, third and one. Thaddeus Singleton, 33, also in on that stop for the Mustangs. They sneak ahead. It looks like they've got first down yardage, and they'll move the chains. We're just underway here in the third quarter at the 10-minute mark, clock rolling. And a fresh set of downs coming up for Nathan Valencia and the Eagles offense that have controlled the time of possession all night. Three wide outs to the right. And whistles will kill this play. I think we got some movement on the offense. Here's Terry Lockett. We got a dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, replay first down. You know, coming into tonight, uh, we didn't really give much. Uh, there you see Coach Ewing very concerned. His defense has got to make some stops here. First and 15 from the Mustang, 32. Draw play, up, ended. What a tackle there. Well, I'll tell you, that's, that's great by the tackling machine, Marcus Jones. It was indeed, but tremendous help from the secondary from Amiga up from his linebacker spot. He really finished off this play, as you'll see here. Bang. Well done. Second and 15 on the no gain carry. Valencia rolls, fires, a flag comes out on the incomplete pass. Two flags, as a matter of fact. Terry Lockett's been busy, no doubt. Well, Imperator, as usual, you're correct. Well, two penalties against the Eagles have halted this drive suddenly. Uh, you know, they moved the football, made a couple of first downs, and now they're going backward here. Let's look at it. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, replay second down. So they have to make up about a mile to get a first down. They'll need to get inside the 20 yard line, inside the 15 maybe for a first down, second and 31 upcoming. All night to throw. Now he rolls, hitches, throws a lob. An amazing catch apparently, but we'll wait and see what the officials have in mind. Dem Alexander. You'll see Alexander 36 here well, with focus. Well, I see some interference by that corner with his face right there beforehand. Well, T.J. Ewing, as you said, Coach, very concerned at this point in got time. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. So after a holding penalty, and a motion penalty against the Eagles. Pass interference on Monterey Trail. And here's Valencia rejoining the huddle after a quick sideline conference with Coach Costa. Second and 16 from the 33. Twin wides left and right. Vieira in the backfield. 
cross Buck and outstanding defensive play right there. Boy, that was smelled out, anticipated, and Amiga came up big. He came from outside from the perimeter, an outstanding defensive play. That'll bring up a third and long. You know, again, Valencia, not known for his running, came into tonight's contest with 403 rushing yards and nine touchdowns to go along with his passing. I'd say 34 collective touchdowns is a healthy total. But now third and 14 from the 31. <laughs> he wants to throw. He's getting some pressure now, and he's going to be sacked. He couldn't get away. Excellent pass pressure, the best the Mustangs have had all night. And there were three of the Mustangs in there contributing. Marcus Jones, 42, among them. And can't say enough about him. There's the flush. Singleton flushed him. And Jones dropped him with cover-up help that time from Amiga. Fourth and 14. Well, I'll tell you, the Monterey Trail has uh, stepped it up here in the last three or four downs, particularly from linebackers outside linebacker Amiga and Jones, the inside backer. This is a huge down here at fourth and 16. But evidently, Coach Costa wants to talk it over, so the Eagles call time. We'll be right back for more of Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. We resume action with a critical fourth and 16 from the Monterey Trail 33. We're all tied up at 14 each. Wow! After the call timeout. And the full start on the offense. A five yard penalty, still fourth down. That is an unforced mistake. The penalty is only five, but it brings up fourth and 21. And forces a punt here from the 38. Trey Kennedy to do the booting from midfield. High, wobbly, spiral. Nice punt to the far corner and downed near the one. That was a tremendous punt by Trey Kennedy from the 50-yard line. The direction was perfect. The touch was soft and it enabled his teammate to down it just outside the Monterey Trail goal line. And there's the visiting Eagle Partisans coming up big tonight, supporting their team in this Division I opening rounder, number five seed against number 12. And right now, the number five is backed up to their goal line, seven minute mark. Third quarter, and still on his feet. The Eagle defenders looking around to find out where the ball is. That well, was some tremendous amazing. ball fake there. Yes, it was. I and mean, that's the second time that's happened this evening where suddenly the ball come, ball carrier comes out of nowhere and Ramsour picks up another three or four yards. On both occasions, it was Ramsour with the ball and nobody yeah. looking his way. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. I mean, you you know, you got to play football till the whistle blows. 
And uh, I notice now a couple of offensive linemen playing some D uh, center. Marquise Barube now playing some defense. Number 78. Second and four from the seven yard line. Double wideouts way to the near side. They stay on the ground and get nothing, nothing. Well, I don't know if the snap was bad, but I don't believe that was a planned play. And uh, really, it just, Timonin looked like it was a mis something went on there. Uh, he wasn't ready for the snap. Victor Timonin taking over the lead quarterback position this year after the departure of the outstanding Zach Larrier, who had succeeded Robert Holt. Simonin this year, nine touchdown passes, zero interceptions, but in this evening's contest, he has missed some open receivers up to this point in time. Third and three. Big hole, big run. Open daylight. Here's a cut and a foot race. Will they catch him? I don't think so. Changed direction three times. What a scintillating run. That time, it cut. <laughs> that was, <laughs> Ram Sewer is probably the happiest guy in the building. That play took a long time to complete, not just because of the distance covered, but because of the direction changes and the defense having to fall back. Caleb Ram Sewer. Mustangs back in front, and I was about to say earlier, the next score in this game is going to be a pivotal score for whoever takes the lead. Now we'll see. On for the PAT for the Mustangs. Diego Soto, and now, an apparent timeout. Don't usually see that too often, and <laughs> unless they decide to uh, decide to go for two on this play. But that was an incredible play right there from deep in their territory. And when he broke out of the pack, there was still confusion in that Eagle secondary on where the ball was. It certainly was, and this drive started on the one yard line. Okay, so here they were in the hole, and they more than dug out of the hole, and. And they also give credit to their defense stopping uh, Pleasant Grove on their drive, their initial drive, where they held the ball for three minutes, uh, going down the field after the second half kickoff and came away with nothing. Well, there's what we have coming up. It'll be quarter final round action as the playoff coverage continues here on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. And we'll tease that again for you later on what might be the matchup we cover. Meantime, Soto on for the apparent PAT. And whistles are gonna halt this play. On the defense, TJ! <laughs> Terry Lockett. Retry. Well, Terry Lockett's had his hands full keeping this one fair and square. Now we'll try for the third time to see if there's actually a play run here. Snap, low, booted, and got it. 5-10 of the third, 21-14. Look at this wild play here. Ram Sewer breaks out. Change direction, cut, move forward, break again to the middle, veer back and cut it back again, we'll be right back. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go.
Well, the ensuing kickoff does not draw action. The football's parked at the Pleasant Grove 30-yard line, and for the third time this evening, the Eagles find themselves trailing by seven. Well, they can't ill afford it. Happened before they threw a pick. They came away with not just with nothing. They came across with a, a, a differential of 14. Triple wide receivers to the right for the Eagles. He keeps it after the fake, and he darts through a hole, and he has the first down and about a 13-yard run to the 45. Nathan Valencia. Well, I would assume Valencia is approaching 100 yards, and between him and Weinberg, uh, really, uh, have a look here. Great fake inside. It's all tackling Weinberg, the great fake by Valencia. So from the 45 yard line, it's a 15 yard run. Weinberg bounces off two tacklers and finally shoved back after a two yard run. Now this is a fierce game right now and becoming more intense after each play. Weinberg had a splendid first half and a tough back, four tacklers there. Well, nowhere for him to go. He's lucky he got a yard or two there. Pushed back, and uh, I see the fake going inside and going to the ear. They have a, they go to that right side and run that quick out after faking to Weinberg. Motion shown, good protection, and an overthrown pass incomplete intended for Trey Kennedy. Valencia normally puts that one right where it belongs. Well, yes. Um, that was under pressure. He had time to throw. Yes, very definitely. And the receiver open. You see him take a three-step drop. And there he is. Uh, pretty good, decent coverage on number 20, Kennedy. Ball should have been caught. Broadway had dropped off and was in on the coverage there. So it brings up a third and eight from the Eagle 47. Four minutes left here in the third. Monterey trail up by seven. Vieira in the motion. They try to reverse it and it's gonna be dumped for a huge loss as they tried to get the football to Kennedy. And the defense was ready on that. Well, Broadway certainly. and excellent help from Brevin Amiga. Look here. Well, that play wasn't very well executed. It was there was little to no faking, and certainly Monterey Trail defense stayed at home with it. If you see that play again, it was wide open. Right, the timing in that play was not there. They lose six on the play, and they're going to be forced to punt. 3.15 left in the third clock rolling. There's the Kennedy punt. He's done a very nice job this evening with his punts. That one's taken inside the 20, and he's going to come back with it. Slipping tacklers, trying to get outside, and does a wonderful job making the most of that opportunity. Antonio Williams, good to see him back in action after that foot injury earlier. Well, it certainly has. He's, uh, he's playing all defense tonight, but that was an outstanding run on that punt return. Let's take another look. He tracked it nice. Followed it all the way. Broke a tackle, broke a tackle. Slipped a tackle. Valiant effort. So this would be an opportunity for the Mustangs in T.J. Ewing's outfit to try to stretch that lead. Three times they've led by seven. First and 10 from the 35. Nothing doing there. Nice job to get out of that tackle. Penalty marker thrown, but loose running by Brown. He's gonna break it. 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Mustangs, but the penalty was dropped way back at the 30-yard line, and that was some speed. Well, that was speed galore, and he had an escort going down the sideline. 
that's the profit ground we know and that's the speed that we know that Monterey Trail has and we've seen some glimpses of it tonight. Here it is. There's a pitch to Brown, a missed tackle. Has a good block and watch him turn up the sideline. 65 yards worth, changes directions a couple times and then see if you can catch me. All coming back, however, Terry Lockett. Holding offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. So the original line of scrimmage was the Monterey Trail 35. It goes all the way back to the 21 now. So they lose 14 on the play. Make it first and 24 from the Monterey Trail 21. The run play gets across the 25. They get a few on the play. Hard running by Ramsour. He's a tough back. Yes, he is. I like his I like his moves and I like his yards after contact. And then you see number 72, Siadrovic in there uh, for Pleasant Grove. There was a tremendous block on Nickerson to take him out on the play. But here we go on second and 21. The play strung out. Decent little game, but far from first down yardage. Again, Ramsour with the carry. It's gonna bring up third and long. Let's see who puts the block on Nickerson. We'll see it out here, a block on 31. Bingo. Oh yeah. That was Mario Keenan Mario doing the Keenan. honors there. Yeah, welcome to the big world. And I'll tell you, Nickerson's had a big time game. That was a great block by Keenan. Third and 12, the big play. He looks to throw, high lob, right sideline, grabbed! What a play right there. That was a tremendous effort Antonio Williams. by Antonio Williams over the shoulder to look it in. Well, give credit to Victor Timonen with great touch. Watch Victor Timonen lay it in, nose up, let him run through the football. Antonio with great concentration. A well executed play. Probably their most best executed play tonight with timing. No doubt. They run the football. Nickerson back in on the action, getting part of that tackle. Their defense has really impressed me. And also backup tackle Nate Theodorovich getting part of that stop as well. But it's a three yard gain, second and seven from the PG 40. The third period expiring rapidly, less than a minute to go here in the third. 21-14, Monterey Trail. A key drive here, trying to build up some insurance. Quick opener up the middle, close to a first down, but perhaps a yard short. We'll see where they spot. Well, this looks like Monterey Trail football now, because Talakai, Keenan, Ramirez, and are you meant to? Snipes are getting. Have a look at this timing on this. Victor Timonen, three step drop, puts the nose up on that fade route, puts it right over to the head, away from the defender, and catchable in the hands of Antonio Williams. Coverage on the play applied by Numika Ukuwosa, but great catch. Third and two. Football at the Eagle 35, and whistles will stop this play. We've played three quarters here at Monterey Tra Trail High School in this playoff opener, 21-14 Mustangs. We'll be right back. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. 
To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. We have entered the twilight zone here out in Elk Grove at Monterey Trail High at the Mark Macris Memorial Stadium. It's a Division I opening round playoff game. 21-14 host Monterey Trail on top and in the process of driving the field, trying to get some insurance and the tough Pleasant Grove defense that has been so stubborn all night. We'll see if they can maintain it. Third and two. Big blast, look out, this one's open. And it will go the distance. Caleb Ram, pure on a burst from 35. It took a while. And we saw Browns get called back from 65, but there's a speed burst. Penalty against Monterey Trail to neutralize another touchdown romp. Take it easy, Caleb. Long way to go. Tough luck. Holding. Offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. Well, it not only takes away a touchdown from the Mustangs, but it makes a first down conversion more difficult because well, of the penalty yardage here. They only lost four yards on the penalty. Third and five. But that's it. They were third and two, now it's third and five. Probable four down territory, depending on this play. Well, uh, I, I'm seeing delayed whistles here. Ram Sewer had nowhere to go on that. Nickerson was in for part of that tackle. Let's take another look at that third and five. Nowhere to go. Uh, the defensive line got off the football. No, he was in a bear hug immediately applied by James Turrentine. Well, he's had a big game on the, on the D line tonight. Fourth and five. Let's see. He wants to throw. It's a sideline lob. Incomplete. And a flag flies late. Ooh-wee. I don't know about that, but let's see what they say. Antonio Williams, the intended receiver, and it looked like the DB had pretty good position. Let's take a look. It's a pass interference against the Eagles. Here's the throw. It's Nathan Vieira. Oh my goodness. Wow. Woo, I Daddy. don't know if you could play defense better than that, Will. I really don't know. If you can. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Yardage results in a first down. Well, I got to say that the correct call was missed on that play based on what we saw. First and 10 from the 22 run play. Nice tackle to prevent a big gain. Turrentine and the rest of that D line has played excellent. Now here's a an injured Eagle down on the play, and I believe it's Turrentine. So they gained two on the play to the 20.
We want to take a closer look at the pass interference call on Nathan Vieira. The other angle was superior, but Antonio Williams couldn't get near the football because of Vieira's position, despite being several inches shorter than Williams. Well, I think that's as good a defense as we'll see. I'm very sorry to hear this, see this injury to James Turrentine. He has been a standout tonight on defense for the much maligned Pleasant Grove Eagles defense. Uh, they have been terrific tonight. Well, uh, it could be the best. It could be the best defensive effort uh, of the season for the Eagles. Really, uh, I don't think that. Again, we're uh, this game's not over, but to hold the mighty potent running game of Monterey Trail down to this many points again, we still have 10 minutes to play in this contest. But uh, give credit to that Eagle uh, front plus their linebackers. That defense has played well. No doubt. We got a second and seven from the 19. A concerted effort helped out by a shaky call on the penalty. Again, excellent ball faking that gets players without the ball being tackled, but nevertheless, Lands was tied up there and unable to shake loose. Third down. Well, again, that defensive front beat them off the, the, there. And once again, linebacker, I'll tell you. Uh, Jack O'Connor was tough on that. <laughs> very, very. Third and five. Power formation. They run it and get stuffed. My word. O'Connor 77 with help from another defender there. Alexander 36 was there. And. Caleb Ramsour got tagged hard. Well, once again here, a key down, uh, fourth and five. Alexander 36, you're going to see, along with O'Connor 77, shut this down high and low. Yes. Nice replay, guys. So what we got is a fourth and five, clock ticking. Less than nine and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. And a key possession here, fourth and five. Mustangs trying to get some insurance. Here's a toss. They want to throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Mustangs, as they sting the Eagles with the play we've been looking for all night long. Antonio Smith with the grab. And that was huge. It came on a fourth and five. It looked like Prophet Brown was going to run the sweep. Watch this pitch. A pitch to Brown. And Brown holds up on the sweep and throws downfield to wide open Williams. And that is his second TD pass of the season on plays like that. So Soto won for the PAT, trying to make it 28. Got all the distance he needs and got it. At 9-11 of the fourth, the Mustangs stretch out, and here's how they did it with some deception as downtown Brown puts it on the money to A.W. We'll be right back. Well, we're into the fourth quarter now. Here comes the Monterey Trail kickoff after the Mustangs have opened up some breathing room, leading it by 14 high, but very short. Here's the run back from the 25, but well contained. At the 35, first and 10, Pleasant Grove, they've got their work cut out. Well, they do now, they're down 14 and 
they can't afford uh, uh, really throwing any turnovers of any type and quarterback Valencia has got to put together a drive number one and move from there. Nine oh seven left in this one. A spread out formation here with three wides to the near side and they sure taking a long time and the flag flies. Got a false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. The old MPT category. Yes, it comes forward unfortunately in every football game. Minus five. First and 15 from the 30. Valencia wants to go upstairs. Sideline route. Well defended with positioning incomplete. Yeah, he tried to go down the field to Watt, Kevin Watt, but well covered by that corner. Second and 15. So after the clutch fourth down option pass TD, now the Mustangs are in a position if they can get a stop here to really open it up and break the game open. Oh yeah. This is a key series for the Eagles. Valencia to run it. He picks his way and gets back past the original line of scrimmage, but now it's gonna bring up a fourth and about nine. Well, it should bring up a third and nine and and this is a key down for them uh the end you might even see them gamble on fourth down this is third and nine i believe they may be forced to gamble third and nine from the 36. motion he looks right and fires over the middle got a man wide open and it's first down yardage on the hook up to trey kennedy well, he delivered that ball, and again, it's the first time he went over the middle. And I was just about to say, you know, we have everything going to the boundary and nothing going to the middle. Nice, right over the middle. There you go. Fakes to the right as a wide open Kennedy. First down. Boy, there's some hard hitting going on out there. Well, they did. Uh, they faked to Weinberg, and he picked up about three or four, and he kept the ball, and they quick whistled him. <laughs> it's uh, amazing how before they were slow whistle, but suddenly now we got a quick whistle. Here's another look at it. It's going to bring up a second and eight. No huddle. Eagles are going to have to move fast. They're down by 14. Fire left. And a lateral, the hook and ladder. The hook and, hook and, and lateral. there it is there. Ladder. They get a little extra. And guess who got the lateral? Big 6'7", Jack O'Connor. A lineman. It's a key first down to keep this drive alive. 77, getting his mitts on the football. Seven and a half minutes to play. Back up to the line quickly are the Eagles. First and 10 from the 41 but whistles will halt this play. And Monterey Trail calls a timeout. We'll take a break ourselves and come right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Seven and a half minutes to go in this game. 
Pleasant Grove on the move. They're down two touchdowns. Here's the screen to the left side. Weinberg dropped inside the 40, well short of a first. Clock rolling. Gain of two, second and eight. Football at the Monterey Trail 39 yard line. Eagles send three wide receivers to the near side, less than seven minutes to go in this game. Opening round, playoff action. All night to throw. Valencia finally flushed and throws on the run. He's got a hook up there along the near sideline. Again, Trey Kennedy, the man of the moment. First and 10. Valencia looked in three different directions and still had plenty of time. Well, Let's take had, another look at this. He had great protection here. Watch all the time, he's got at least four seconds. Flushes it out, Kennedy wide open. He rolls left, fires on the run, and has another hook up. This time, he goes out to Max Lofren Smith. I think that's his first catch of the night. I believe it is. You're right. We expect a lot more from him. Six minute mark, clock rolling. Second and five from the 26. Vieira in motion. Valencia fires to him. He's got the ball in the flat, but he's dropped at the 16 yard line. Shia the first. Here's another quick look. Watch Vieira wide open in the sidelines. Nice sure tackling there by Jamari Jackson to leave him a, a yard shy of the first. <laughs> Five and a half to go, clock is rolling. Three Eagles to the left as wide receivers. Valencia, cool, calm customer under pressure. Looks right, nobody open, and throws to the end zone. Incomplete, three defenders there, but a safe throw and that nobody could get to it. Well, right now, the way they're dropping off, that screen is open, Will. Chris uh, Lands, number 12, yeah. with coverage here, along with he can send, Broadway. He can send four wides vertical, and that'll take five people out of the play. And he runs a short side or wide side screen. And the screen or draw is right is available. But Weinberg's not in there on the draw, or is he? Yes, he is. From the 16 yard line, a second and 10. They run it up the middle and blast inside the 10. Boy, they're biting off small little chunks, but getting closer. Weinberg there, you see. Nice tackle. Solo tackle there. Third and four. Throw left. A catch and an immediate tackle. Short of the first down. Oh, well, he's short about a yard and a half, too. Brown dropped Trey Kennedy. And... Whistles indicate a timeout. It comes at the 439 mark. Yeah. Fourth quarter. We'll be right back for more continued drama on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Hi, I'm Peter. And there's nothing I love more than sharing vegetables with my friends. Come on in! Help yourself to anything. That's why we give our food the utmost respect it deserves. Did you know there are simple steps we can all take to help save food? You can cook it, store it, even share it. Just don't waste it. Because when it comes to food, better ate than never. 
To learn more, visit savethefood.com. It's crunch time here in Elk Grove at Monterey Trail High School. It's a Division I playoff opener. 28-14, Monterey Trail on top, but the Eagles threatening. Valencia tried the delay run and got stuffed and thrown back on fourth down. They don't get it. Antonio Williams and company up to the challenge. Wow. It was as if they knew the play in advance. My, my. And the ball goes over. That was a key, key stop. Oh. Wow. That probably was the best defensive effort of the night with the Monterey Trail defense, without a doubt. It's a first and 10 from the nine. They're in the danger zone. Cannot afford any mistakes, any ball handling mistakes here. The dive play is wiped out completely. It'll consume some time on the give to Caleb Ramsure. But that defensive effort was clutch to say the very least. So after a quick sideline chat with Coach Ewing, Victor Timonen back at the helm for Monterey Trail with a second and nine. They go wide right and bite off about five or so. Well, which, however, they stop the clock. And that surprises me where they can't run the inside dive and give inside and let the clock run. Looking down to Coach Ewing for a reaction on his guy getting out of bounds and stopping the clock, something they did not want. Victor Timonen, there you see the QB. And let's take another look as they go wide here. That's Chris, Chris Lands. So the clock stops at 3.52, late fourth. Mustangs looking at a third and five from their own 14 yard line. Again, protecting the football is paramount. Just a straight push, basically conceding that down to, to have the Eagles spend a timeout. And it comes at the 344. So we'll dance away ourselves and come right back though, because we're coming down the stretch on the hometown sports game of the week. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. After the timeout, the big call here. Fourth and three from their own 16 yard line. They do not show punt. How about that? They hand off, they run it, and they've got first down yardage, I believe. Wow, that could have been it. That could have been a touchdown right there. Ram Sewer, had he stepped out of that, would have been a foot race. Move the chains, a gutty call by T.J. Ewing and the Mustangs, and here's how it happened. Watch Ramsar. He might have had a couple of more, really. He stumbled there. First down. But the clock's running, and uh, 
that was a key down in a gutsy call by Monterey Trail. On fourth and three, they run for the first down deep in their territory. Well, now you see him maxing out on the on the get ready for play count. Less than three minutes to go now. First down, running play, smothered. Well, uh, that defensive line has earned high praise in tonight's contest. Well, when you consider, uh, again, with two minutes and change going, unless Monterey breaks one, uh, 28 points by Monterey Trail is not a lot. Here you see that D-line, they've played uh, good football. Barubi 78 and Nate Theodorovich 72 teaming on that stop. Yeah, they have uh, they didn't start on D tonight, but they've been there most of the night doing a great job. Second and eight from the 22, 210 to go. Nice. Nice. So they string the pile that time and get a few more as Ram Sure is getting a real workout. Yes, they're just going to run dive right and dive left. That's all they have to run. And just hold on, secure the football. And again, Matt Nickerson making the stop. Well, he's been there all night long. A minute 36, 34, 32, and counting down on a third and about four here for the Mustangs. Tight formation. Well, you can tell the respect that Matt Nickerson's getting. He's getting offside two and three linemen coming at him every down. That shows you the respect he's getting. A minute to go in this one. Pleasant Grove gamely fighting tonight on the road. Made this one quite a ball game. Well, I'd say so, Matt Costas team has put forth a great effort here against the league leading of the Metro Monterey Trail holding them like I said to 28 points. Well a timeout taken by the Mustangs here with 31 seconds remaining prior to a fourth and three snap and assuming that this game We'll conclude with time expiration here. Uh, we were treated to some terrific, good old fashioned defensive football and along the way, offense being sprinkled in and that'll give us a chance to let you know that next week, of course, the Sac Joaquin section playoffs will continue. It'll be quarter final round action and we will be there to cover one of the Excellent matchups afforded after tonight's action shakes out. And don't want to speculate quite yet, but I think there's a couple that, after having seen the brackets coach, that. Uh, well, very definitely. <laughs> very definitely. There are some uh, seated teams that were on a bye tonight that uh, we're going to get to see. There's TJ, very happy here as this game's coming to a conclusion. As he said at halftime, his kids will adjust and be ready in the second half, and they certainly have been. Punt formation. Snaps on target. A poor punt distance-wise, but good hang time. It bounces, and it's going to be downed with no return inside the Eagle 40 with just a few seconds left in this one. So <laughs> credit. Kevin Adams for having some excellent punting this evening. Well, Nathan Valencia is going to get his mitts on the football at least for one more play, perhaps more. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to do something extraordinary with it. Well, I'm sure he's going to try to at least get one more score on the board here 
out of timeouts, he's going to have to huddle real quickly if they if they don't score here on this down. Four receivers, three of them going deep. He's scrambling for time, throws on the run. The comeback route is incomplete. Clock stopping with eight seconds left as he was trying to hook up with Max Lofren Smith. So possibly final play of tonight's game and it has been a wild one. Certainly had a lot more in it than I was able to account for. A lot of surprises tonight. Valencia a wheeler and dealer and he throws short. Clock stopping with two seconds. I guess there was no indication if that was complete or not. Apparently incomplete. Incomplete and out of bounds both. So the Eagles and Nathan Valencia squeezing every second out of the clock here. He'll get one more shot. Three, he's had three plays within 16 seconds. And this will do it. Quick hit, blocked and incomplete. And credit outside linebacker Brevin Amiga for having a standout performance this evening. But recognized by us in a wild one here that goes into the book as a 28 to 14 victory by Monterey Trail in this Division I opening round of the CIF Sac Joaquin Section Football Championships. Sportsmanship abounding here after a hard fought, intense, brutal, physical game tonight. We saw some outstanding football. Well, this is what playoff football is about. It's one and done, unfortunately, for Matt Costa's group, but they played hard here tonight. Uh, certainly, uh, they gained the respect of everybody in this ballpark, I believe, including including the Mustangs. And I fully believe what you said earlier about this being most likely their top all-around performance of the season, despite in a losing effort. Their defense showed up and played first class, and uh, they weren't able to generate as many points as usual, but nevertheless, a hard-fought, tight game. Stay with us. When we return for our post-game segment, as usual, we will be identifying our players of the game and our Lauren Goodman will be chatting with them, possibly even the winning coach upon our return. We'll be right back. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play more. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Thank you for calling your GED pep talk center. All right, now are you ready for your GED pep talk? Being nervous is okay. It just shows that you're serious about getting your diploma. All right, listen, we all need a little nudge sometimes. I don't function without coffee in the morning, but it is going to take more than a double mochaccino to help you here. A lot of things are scary. Heck, I'm scared of clowns. No quiero oír. Danny, no lo puedo hacer. Quiero oír. Danny, lo voy a hacer. DMC, liking your pep talk style. Just keeping it real, Deb. Just keeping it real. <laughs> Look! I'm gonna get my GED. Come on, get your hey, GED. Hey. Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org.
the verdict is in and the decision is final this evening in Elk Grove here at Monterey Trail High School at the Mark Macris Memorial Stadium in Division I opening round Sac Joaquin section playoff action. Monterey Trail stops Pesky Pleasant Grove by a final count of 28 to 14 in a ball game that had many twists and turns and more than the average number of surprises unveiled here before a good crowd. Yes, we have, uh, and I know that we're getting ready for our most valuable players to be presented, and boy, we have some good ones here, like you said, in the Hard Fork contest, and uh, Pleasant Grove here came to play, gave Monterey Trail all they wanted, and uh, certainly uh, a very physical battle. We have determined our players of the game, and as you see by the graphic posted, for visiting Pleasant Grove, their outstanding quarterback and linebacking duo, Nathan Valencia and Matthew Nickerson, splendid seasons and terrific games tonight. And for the host Monterey Trail Mustangs, Antonio Williams and Caleb Ramsure, number 20, will be our players of the game and our Lauren Goodman is standing by with our players of the game. Goody? Well, I have a full load. Tonight was a great game and a great matchup for the opening round of the playoffs. But we're going to start with the defensive man for the Eagles. Talk to me about the defensive game plan coming in tonight. You guys pretty much were able to hold them and stop them in what they normally do. Tell me the game plan coming into tonight. Well, really, we were just trying to keep on remembering our responsibilities. You know, everyone had their own responsibility, and we just stuck with that the entire game. And you know, once they started running outside of us, that's when we just kind of lost it. But, I mean, we still stuck through it, and, I mean, we really tried the hardest the entire game. It just, it just couldn't get them. Now, your performance tonight was spectacular. Coach talked really high about you. Sometimes you got some double teams getting in there in the middle. How tough is it playing middle linebacker and kind of getting on these running backs that they had for Monterey Trail? It was real tough, you know, especially those big linemen coming after us. It was hard trying to get those linemen out of our way and then try to get, read the running back. It was, a, it was a fun but hard game. I really enjoyed it. It was probably one of my best games this year. Now, you guys have been one of the teams to watch. You just had a miraculous season, kind of turned things around. Kind of just talk to me about your team this year and how special they were for you. Well, this team, we really got a tight bond this year. You know, we've been together for about three years now, and we just know everyone's in and outs, and we're all brothers. I mean, family comes first, and the first thing we come to family, it's our football team. It's how close we are, and just, we, we just love each other all so much. Well, thank you, Matt, for spending a little time with me. It was great talking to you. Now, I'm here with the QB, the man of the hour. Um, you came out with high intensity. How much of your level of play impacted the game tonight and how you wanted to come out? Well, we wanted to come out strong. We wanted to come out, hopefully get a stop on defense, which, what, which is what we did, and then come out on offense the next drive and score. And, you know, we got down close to the goal line, and I threw an interception. You know, they took it to the house for six, but I was able to flush it. I told my uh, team, I was like, hey, guys, don't worry about it. You know, we get the ball right back. You know, we know that we can drive on them. We're, and then we went down and scored. Well, now, talk to me through the first half. You got to kind of had them off balance. They couldn't kind of figure out what you guys were running, how you guys were attacking them. Talk to me about the offensive game plan. Well, the offensive game plan was, you know, throw a formation out and give a play. And then we don't know which way we're going to run based off their defense. And then once I see, or once me or the, um, my offense coordinator sees what base they're running, we're going to play. We're going to run to where they're not. And so that's what we did mainly of the first half. And then it switched up second half. But it was mainly we wanted, to, we wanted to keep going. We wanted to get play after play after play, get them on their heels so we can just keep moving forward. Now, um, I know football isn't done for you, so talk to me about just this team and how special they were for you this year as you were the leader. And then talk to me about your plans after high school. Oh, man, this team, I, I love them. You know, last year we had a rough patch. You know, we went 0-10. We weren't as close. And then this year, you know, we hit the weight room. We started doing team activities outside of school. You know, we either got... We went to someone's house and swam, you know, everyone just, everyone just got, we just got closer. And so everyone bonded on, in those specific aspects. And so it just made us closer than we are last year and it won us games and it got us here to the playoffs. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me again. Have a good luck thank in the rest you. of your year. Now, I'm here with the Monterey Trail Mustangs. Who should I start with first? I'm going to come this way. First time 
player of the game. Tonight you came out with so much intensity. Where was your focus level in being this the first game of the playoffs? Uh, we just wanted to get a win to go to the next round of the playoffs. We always wanted a chance to show ourselves in the playoffs. The team last year, we, everybody was thinking like, we ain't going to do nothing without them. But this year we got people. We've been working hard all summer. we just here. Now talk to me about your leadership. When you came out of the tunnel in the second half, you really wanted your team to be fired up. You were really, really energetic on the sideline. Talk to me about that conversation with your teammates and how you kind of got them going to go in the second half. Well, during halftime, we, we told ourselves we was always in it. It was just that we had a, what, uh, just had to accomplish our goals. Everybody had to do their own job. Everybody played their own role. We just been, came in rolling. Now, I know you guys have a group of, of running backs together, but you had an injury. You seem like you stepped up specifically in that second half. What did you want to bring to the table as you saw one of your teammates down? Well, I knew one of my teammates down, I, I had to do it for my teammate because I know I could play any position. I could play running back. I played running back freshman year, but my team, we did it. We came through in the second half and finished it off right. How does it feel to get a first-round playoff win? Feel good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm here with my other guy, Caleb. You came out explosive in the second half. Talk to me about what was the difference from the first half to your play in the second half. Um, my dif the difference in my play was uh, we went in a, a team room and uh, discussed what we had to do to come out in the second half to get the dub. Uh, we came out and uh, ran our tracks full speed and uh, had our eyes open, had vision, and got through the holes. Now this team, we've talked to you guys all year and you guys have really been wanting to prove something to everybody, to show everybody that this team is just as talented as you guys had in the prior years. How do you feel your team kind of grew up tonight after this tough game? Um, we grew up a lot because like last year when we played Oak Ridge in the playoffs, the same type of atmosphere happened where we were tied up in the, in the first half and we just came out and did our jobs and uh, just locked in and everybody got together and said we're going to do this thing and we just came out and did our job. Tell me how does it feel as the leader this year to kind of get that first playoff win and it, at home? It uh, feels good. It feels good to get warmed up, getting, getting started in the playoffs. Uh, we have not met our ultimate goal, so we're just going to keep going and keep fighting. Well, thanks, Caleb. Good luck in the second round. Thanks. Now, I'm going to get Coach Ewing to step in here. Coach, you, you, your team was battle-tested tonight. Um, you know you got a young ball club, but they were tested. How do you feel about your team's performance in that second half? I thought the seniors really were impactful in the game. They really showed that that's what the playoffs are about, seniors making plays. And they did exactly that on the line, the DBs. I mean, Antonio's interception touchdown, Caleb's long run. I mean, those guys played excellent. That's exactly what happens. These guys know this is their last year in high football, and they got to impact the game. They absolutely did that tonight. It was unbelievable to watch those guys' performance tonight. Coach, now you had some, some penalty runs in there a little bit, kind of wanted to clean the game up, had a few injuries impact your team. Talk to me about how battle-tested this group is, probably something that people don't know about. Well, you know, I think we just have a, a lot of depth. Guys are really doing a good job stepping in when they're, they're called to do it. And uh, that's just a testament to the players and their uh, just focus on doing the job at practice, getting better every day. So just plug and play. Coach, what's, what is it going to take for your team to kind of focus in, rebound from this win? and get ready for that second round of the playoffs? Well, a whole different animal, but you know we're going down there to play at St. Mary's, but I think our team is uh, excited for the competition. I think our guys really love to compete, and uh, it's going to be a great football game next week. I'm excited to see what happened, Coach. Good luck in the second round. Will, that's all from the field. Thanks, Goody. Well, certainly a relieved Coach T.J. Ewing uh, had his hands full in that first half with a scrappy pleasant grove outfit that looked like they could do just about anything and as he said it coach the seniors came through big well they certainly did and monterey trail scored seven in every quarter so they were balanced and the thing that was good is they shut out pleasant grove in the second half 14-0 it's 14-14 at the half they shut out pleasant grove meanwhile score seven in the third seven in the fourth to come away with a nice 28 to 14 victory well, big game experience, I believe, as we talked about earlier, factored in this game, certainly. Um, the Pleasant Grove crew had not been in the playoff hunt during the, the reign of this group of players while uh, Coach Ewing and the Mustangs had gone through those experiences, and it paid off tonight. Uh, the clutch performance down the stretch, the second-half shutout, and – the big play scoring when they needed it, Coach. Well, it certainly was. you got to give a lot of credit to Coach Matt 
and his crew, Matt Costa, and his staff because uh, they came to play tonight. And you know, I know that it was a rough second half of the season. They finished six and four, but they showed tonight they're a pretty good football team. Uh, un- unfortunately, once again, turnovers and mistakes play were a factor tonight, and a big factor. But uh, give credit to their defense uh, to hold this potent Monterey Ball Club to 28 points, seven in each quarter. Is uh, I show a lot of respect now for the defense, a lot more. Uh, and people will think a lot more of their defense uh, now than they did coming in here in this contest. I certainly think it's worth mentioning, though. We did see the four players of the game in the postgame segment just now with Goody for Pleasant Grove. Running back Chris Weinberg was a standout tonight. He could have easily been in that lineup. He played superb and was was definitely a force to be reckoned with. And defensively for Monterey Trail, Outside linebacker Brevin Amiga, he wore number 15. He made many stops tonight and was clutch in the most clutch moments of the game. So tip of the cap to him. To both of them, yes. Well, we have something special coming up for you in one week's time, though we're going to keep a lid on the actual identity. We will be part of the quarterfinal round coverage of this 2019 Sac Joaquin section playoffs. And uh, we'll pick it up a week from tonight. Location yet to be disclosed, but you can best believe that as we generally try to do, we'll find an attractive matchup to put out there front and center for you on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week next Friday. So that's the way it shakes out this evening in Elk Grove here at Monterey Trail High School at the Mark Macris Memorial Stadium in a hard-fought physical Division One opening round playoff game. The crowd really got its money's worth in this one and enjoyed some terrific football. But the bottom line was Monterey Trail. The Mustangs move on with a hard-earned 28-14 victory over the visiting Pleasant Grove Eagles. Well, many thanks to the Monterey Trail administration for their courtesies and broadcast arrangements always first class here and my personal thanks to our executive game director mr gary martin for the imperator himself jim domino for our lauren goodman and the entire hometown sports game of the week broadcast crew i'm will james we thank you for joining us tonight And as always, look forward to the next occasion when we can cross your path. So long, everyone. This program from Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week is available for purchase on DVD. For more information, call Access Sacramento, 916-456-8600, extension 0. 
This has been a Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast from Access Sacramento. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda.